How's it going everybody? And in this video, we're going to be talking about lipidomics processing in R. And there is a very cool package or library that has been created by this person named Ahmed Mohammed, And they've done a fantastic job creating a documentation and a website to walk through the way in which you can use this tool to look at lipidomics data sets and to briefly talk about the background of lipidomics. There's been a very cool explosion of data available to people in recent years because of the ability to use mass spectrometry to determine or quantify the concentrations of lipids that are present in uh, living systems, so mice for instance. And so what people do uh, is that they feed mice different diets where they just eat fish oils or they just eat um, you know, other types of lipids and they see how it changes the composition of the lipid species that are present within these mice and there's a ton of concentrations and um, so a lot of new stuff to be looking at and to be analyzing and so this is a great tool in your toolbox if you're one of those people who's interested in doing this because you know one potential application of this has been for people to better understand how different lipid expression profiles can map to different rates or prevalence of cancer um, and so it's a great tool and I'm going to walk through how to basically do what's on the website. Um, if you haven't seen the website already, um, it's lipidr.org. Um, it's a very nice website and I cannot give the author enough credit for this. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for all this. Um, so, uh, basically the way in which you do this is as follows and I'll provide a GitHub repo where I've uploaded the sample data that is on the Lipidar website in a CSV format. So basically you just start out with two CSVs. You need two inputs for the Lipidar package to work and um, you run this R script. And I think probably one of the hardest things you'll run into if you're just getting started to this is going to be figuring out how to actually get the directories correct um, because you need to reference stuff as you're pointing to it at your local computer. So figuring out that part is probably one of the biggest challenges initially, but once you figure out how to successfully point to the correct location on a local computer you're on, you should be in business uh, pretty quickly. So um, I wrote some code here in R just to identify the current working directory. That's what this get wd command is doing um, or method. And I'm saving the uh, repo into this directory. And then within that directory, you've got these files. And um, I also print out the directory path just so that uh, we're all clear on that. But I'm just going to run these lines. And I'm using RStudio right now um, to do all this stuff. So it's a pretty cool IDE for R. I'm just going to run all that stuff. And uh, now we've got some variables in our global environment. And now what I'm going to be doing is the following. So um, when you are giving lipid r data you're going to be giving it the actual uh values for all of your samples so typically one instance of this is going to be something like this where in the experiment um they each one of these columns um, after the first column maps to one of the mice in a study and these values represent the concentrations of that specific type of lipid within that mouse. So cholesterol ester 14 uh, colon zero means that there were 14 carbons with no degrees of unsaturation. So that means there's no carbon-carbon double bonds in this particular fatty acid um, or lipid. And so in this case, we can see how across our uh, cohort, uh, or cohorts, we've got different values of these lipids. So in our case, we had 21 mice. And so um, that is what all these values are looking for. I will say, if you're planning on using custom data sets, um, you may have to put in some time to make sure that you formatted your lipid name correctly because Lipidar does parse your first column for the type of lipid that you're working with. So you wanna make sure that you're using something um, that is following the syntax, it will tell you how it wants it uh, and it will air out. So you'll at least know what it wants. But basically, um, there is a, uh, it, it wants it in this format where you've got the class of the lipid followed by um, the total number of carbons, colon, and then the degrees of unsaturation. So this is the standard nomenclature that you're supposed to be following. And then the alternative is this too, where you've got 
the uh, lipids that have two fatty acids on them, so this diacylglycerides. Um, so that's how these formats need to look. Otherwise, it will air out because a lot of the lipidomics analysis requires not just looking at these numbers, but knowing that the species or the, uh, the class of lipid as well as, you know, is it an even numbered or odd numbered? Or there's a bunch of other analysis going on behind the scenes here. So parsing out the type of lipid makes a very big difference. Um, and so you will need to do that in order to get this to run correctly. Um, but getting back to this, um, so we've got our directory specified. Now what we do is, if you haven't already done this, um, these are the lines you run to actually install the LipidR package. So use the Bioc Manager to initiate this process. Um, so it's kind of like pip in Python, I believe. Um, but basically I've already done this, so I'm not gonna run it, but if you haven't done this before, you would run lines 12 through 16 right here. And then finally, what you do, it's pretty simple. You run this command and you tell it to read in from that CSV and you reference that CSV's path for the um, actual quote unquote data matrix. And that's this guy right here where you have each row corresponding to a lipid uh, and then the column corresponds to each sample in your study. Um, so that's what you need. And then you also need this sample annotation. So um, that's where uh, this second CSV, the second input to the LipidR package comes in here. And that's basically the following where we're specifying um, the characteristics of each one of these mice um, in our study. So X1, it's really sample one. Um, and you would want to say, if this is real, you would say X here um, and replace S with X. But basically you need these names to match up uh, on all these guys um, for this to work. And so I should definitely do that, uh, and I'll update that in the repo. Um, but basically, uh, that will correspond to the actual column names that it has. And so that's where you're going to define and tell LipidR which of the uh, samples within your study were the control versus the actual uh, experimental mice where you, you know, knocked out a gene or you fed them a different diet or whatever. So uh, that's what you're doing there. And then, um, so we're just going to run this. We'll see if it runs successfully. So I'm going to run this guy, and uh, it's telling me it's not finding the path, which is unfortunate. Um, okay. And now I'm going to run that. Okay, and now we've just created this new data object within our global environment. And then, um, so my issue is I didn't actually run these uh, lines. So that's one thing I keep messing up when I'm writing R is just I don't actually run the lines. I'm just writing Python. But anyway, um, and then we're gonna run this guy just like that. I hit Control Enter on the keyboard to run just that one line. And now we can actually do some cool stuff. So we've got um, both of our uh, CSVs in this D object that LipidR has created for us. And now we're actually going to plot some samples. And so um, this is showing us the total ion concentration. So um, it's a nice way to just kind of check across your study to see if you're noting anything that appears to be out of reason. Um, and then we are also going to be uh, setting these other things here. I'm just going to run all these lines together. And so you can do your box and whisker plots, check for outliers within these samples to see if there's anything that's very interesting, like if your control is looking way different from your uh, experiment uh, group. Um, and you can also do some other cool things here, like doing the multivariable analysis plots that look pretty. Um, and so another way you can start visualizing lipidomics data sets. And so um, I'm going to wrap things up with that, but I hope this is interesting and helpful. Thank you again to Dr. Muhammad for putting all this together into this great package, and I will talk to you guys next time.